All right, Rebecca Johnson, welcome to Empower Network TV. Very excited to be talking to you today about uh, this topic. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. Okay, so dressing, do you want to just kick it off again with what we just talked yeah. about? So, uh, Rebecca Johnson, I am a personal stylist for a men's custom clothing line and an image consultant. So people come to me uh, for a couple of reasons, but they all come down to the same reason, which is there's something they want next in their life, whether it's a promotion to go out on their own, start their own business. There's a, um, a committee or uh, an organization they've wanted to join the board of or they're ready to have a change in their romantic life. Um, I let everybody know, no matter who you are, where you're at, to have what you wanna have next, there's an outfit for that. And if we get that for you and you start dressing today for the future you want, it will come so much more quickly. And there's a lot of scientific research that goes into what I do with my clients. Hey, can you give us some of that research? I love, I'm a bit of a science geek that way. So tell me, please, the research. Perfect. Um, so I think when people hear stylist, they think fashion or uh, movie stars or, uh, you know, athletes uh, when they hear cu men's custom clothing. And there once was a time when those were the only people who could afford it. But just as we went from Blackberries to now everybody has a smartphone um, and computers were for important people. And now everybody has computers at home. Um, the same is true of custom clothing uh, through the use of technology. We're really able to personalize every gentleman's look. So no matter what industry they're in, and I know a lot of people hear custom and they think suits and, th and that they were once accurate. It's, it's no longer the case because um, technology has completely changed that. And we are human beings, but we're also human animals. And our brain is constantly scanning our environment to see who, who do I need to talk to? Who's the important person here? How do I get close to them? Who, who, who do I want to stay away from? Now, that's not our personality. We're not mean girls, right? It is as human animals, that is what our brain has done for millions of years successfully to keep us alive. So knowing what those triggers are that send the message to people, um, this person is has authority, this person has strength. We wanna be close to those people. And when we see people who seem to be struggling, uh, not successful, we we instinctively, now there is a you know personality component. You know, I like, obviously I like colorful things. That's my personality. But what I want to trigger in somebody with this outfit is that I'm wearing dark, a dark color. Dark signifies authority. If you look at law enforcement, the clergy, um, whenever our elected leaders are being serious, they wear dark colors. So there, there's a lot of research like that that I use to help people train the brains of others around them to see them as that which they're going towards. Very interesting. So do you guys do you guys uh, help people stylistically, but also then get the clothing they want so it's cut to their body shape or? Absolutely. So all of our clothes, um, I represent Jay Hilburn. Everything we do is made to measure. So before I can work with a client, um, before we can do anything, pick anything out, I get his measurements. And that makes a huge impact because I always tell people, especially, you know, after the pandemic, a lot of people are in more of a business, business casual setting. And the number one, the most important thing, even if you never want to work with me or have a stylist, your clothes need to fit impeccably. And it's highly unlikely that you can buy something off the rack and have it give you that impeccable look. 
because people who are very successful, who are leaders, who are an authority, they do have those kinds of resources to have clothes that fit and flatter them at the highest level. So even if you're going through something and you just truly cannot afford to add a, another garment to your closet, find an excellent tailor and make sure that that your clothes fit you like they were made for you. I tell people though, by the time you do all of that, you, you might as well have started out having them made for you. Plus having clothes made to measure is far more sustainable because the industry that creates the most environmental degradation is the military. And then the second is the fashion industry because of all of this overproduction and and um, we we do not participate in that at all. We have no waste, none of our garments end up in landfill, um, discounted, discounted, discounted. Uh, so it's a much smarter way to shop. You know, I like to tell people, if you think clothing is an expense, you're not spending enough because your clothes should be an investment. You are the star of your movie and you need to pay attention to everything you're doing that is marketing yourself and your your attire is such a crucial part of that. You have total control. You don't have to have gone to Harvard. You don't have to be a member at that XYZ country club. Anybody can and should set themselves up for the highest level of success possible. I don't think anyone can actually argue with you <laughs> intelligently because it makes sense. Like if body hygiene and shaking, how you shake a hand, body posture, all these things matter. So why would clothing not? It's so funny because here I am getting my vehicle changed, sitting in front of this old clunky car. And we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about visuals. This is so apropos. I love it. So psychologically what is happening in our brain when we see someone that is well not just the colors but the, the cut is well what is it doing to us cognitively right so you know i i hate to be the bearer of bad news that the saying that you have seven seconds to make a first impression has actually been completely disproven and um this study just came out from princeton three years ago and they were very disheartened by these findings but they did a study where they took several um people's pictures right and they cut out their face and then they put that same exact face on several different bodies that went from poorly dressed to expensively dressed again no 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 uh name brands no designer labels but just garments that were increasingly more expensive and tailored and fit right and then asked people about the person in the image and the higher up on the expensive outfit uh scale that that face was put, the more competent that person was judged, the higher regard, the better uh, adjectives people had, exact same face on more expensive outfits. And they were trying to find a way, they were trying to research into how to interview and take bias out of the interview process so that you're really selecting the best person to join your team or organization. And they kind of just threw up their hands and said, you know what, interview everybody by phone as long as possible in the process so you don't get impacted because to remove that bias, they, they didn't know how to tell people to remove that bias. Are you telling me then that, so the best way to interview people is to actually not see them because we will be swayed? We cannot not, it is our, our, right? Our reptile brain that for centuries, thankfully, it's why we're here. Our parents did it and they're, you know, and we're continuing on. Our brain is continually making assessments in order to keep us safe um, around who does and doesn't uh, represent an opportunity and a threat. And, and there's no turning that off. I think that's brilliant. So it's good to know on both sides. 
So this is happening to us as well as it's happening for us. Like it's coming this way and going out. Absolutely. You know, they did a study at Duke um, where they had people interview for a job. Uh, to your point, it's not just the impact we have on others. It impacts ourselves. So they had people set up to go interview for a job and some they gave subtle cues like, hey, you should dress up. And the others, they were like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't have to dress up. And the people who dressed up for the interview asked for higher salaries, asked for better benefits, and asked for better titles for the position than people who did not. So it's not only the impact we're having on others, right? It's the impact we have on ourselves. I remember watching, uh, we're tennis fans in my family, and um, Djokovic was losing a match he was really favored to win and he was quite a bit behind several games behind and he, he ended up winning I mean it and it was he was really really losing and uh they asked him afterward like how did you turn that around he said I went into the bathroom and I looked myself in the mirror and then he gave himself a pep talk we are as impacted by how what we see when we look in the mirror as when we look at others. So it's, I mean, haven't you ever had a bad day, a bad date, a bad deal where you just said, you know what, I'm going to put on my best, whatever, my best shirt, my best jacket, my best dress, and I'm going to go and shake this off. Now, did you go home and put on your sweats and shake it off? No. I love it. The truth always stings, at least a little bit. I love it. I love it. This is so good. Okay, so someone who is starting at and either doesn't want to agree with this, but knows they probably <laughs> it's should. It's really frustrating, but it actually should be very liberating. Uh, well, that's how the truth always works. First, it's going to piss you off, and then it's <laughs> going to liberate you as you embrace it. I've had a couple of people that have, anyway, I, I love what you're saying. So um, how do people connect with you? You have websites? Uh, yeah, thank you. So I have a site that has all of my things, and it's very simple. It's my name, and it's 360 degrees of me. So it's Rebecca J 360com and you'll get my contact, my Instagram, my Facebook, links to my other podcast interviews. Uh, you know, I've had corporations hire me because I can say things to their employees, you know, that they can't. Um, and, and this is so, it, it's like you have the goose that laid the golden egg and then you're gonna kill the goose to eat it. No, keep <laughs> let the goose keep laying golden eggs. It's very, very simple to start your wardrobe. You just pick one color and build from there. That That's all you, if you are like, listen, I'm sleeping on a friend's couch. I don't have what it takes to, you know, go buy a thousand dollar cashmere sport coat. Okay. Um, whatever one you have, go get that one tailored. Start there, start somewhere, buy all navy. We're all navy. We're all black, we're all charcoal. It, it's very, very simple. And you can work wonders. It, I, I really consider it. I know some people think, oh, you have to have a lot of money and be that kind of person and have already made it in order to dress well. No, no, no. Ask the people in your world, in your circle, in your office, in your executive suite, when did they start dressing well? And I guarantee you, they started from the beginning. And, and you'll know this happened because um, you have people like this in your life who are using this to their advantage. Because there's the people you, you hear something good happen to them and you'll say, I saw that coming. I, I knew that they were going places. Well, how did they train you to think that of them? Did they walk around and give give you their resume? 
Did they hand the blast email blast their resume to people? No, they they embodied it literally on their body and everybody. It, you don't need a specific kind of body. I mean, my clients, I would say I have guys from five, six to six foot five. And everybody has their own little uh, struggle. This is always wrong when I try and shop. Because clothes that are in stores weren't actually made for you. They have a formula, right? Because they need to appeal to the most number of people. It makes sense. There's nothing wrong with it. And then whatever way your body's not a part of that formula is the expectation that you need to go get that handled. Um, so I, I say that, so nobody should feel disheartened. Everybody should feel there's a way to do this because there is, N nobody's left out. I love what you just said there. I've never thought of it that way. Any clothing in department stores was actually not made for you. It wasn't. It's like, if you think about that, the implications of that. It's like everything is a system and we've been told to mold into systems, all the systems of the world. The fashion industry is a system. It's like, I never, I'm always in between a medium and a large top because I have to buy a large and shrink it to get it to fit. And so it's funny. I think a lot of people are in between the hips are too tight. The thighs are too loose, whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I get it, you know, um, and because for so long, getting custom clothes, it was not accessible to, you know, uh, your average person, your average buyer, but now it absolutely is. And this is when somebody says to me, oh, I never spend more than $50 on a shirt. I'm like, well, what are your results? Are, do you have the clients you want, the salary you want, the social life you want? Um, what do you think the results would be if instead of three $50 shirts, you got one $150 shirt that was made to your measurements, you picked out the button, you picked out the collar that's going to flatter you and your body type, you picked out, you know, your monogram, if, if you had it, and you put that shirt on, and then you went out into a networking event or on a date. How do you think you're going to carry yourself? Those are the results you want. This is why I say, you're, if your clothes are, occur as an expense, you're not spending enough. They should occur as an investment. You should have things in your closet that you're like, every time I wear that, I get a new lead. I close a deal. Uh, I get a second date, <laughs> whatever it is. I love it. I love it. So uh, you're making me think here. Okay. I, I'm going to be tagging you in the, um, in this interview in the group, please drop any links into the comment section of this. Okay. So Absolutely. people can find you. This is, um, Absolutely. There, it's mo in this group. It's probably 80% women. It's probably 90% women, but there are some guys in here and that follow well, us. And the women probably no men. This is true. This is true. They can, they try to help them out. I'm sure they do. Or and I do us have out. Yeah. women refer men to me because they're like, I'm tired of fighting with my husband over this. You talk to him. <laughs> okay. This is, this has been excellent, Rebecca. I just love it. So it's RebeccaJ360.com. RebeccaJ360.com. Yeah. Um, if you know any men who wear clothes and don't like shopping, they're going to love me because I'm a concierge service. So uh, most of my clients I meet with over Zoom. I can meet in person, but I have clients all across the U.S. Um, and through the magic of uh, technology, thanks partially to the pandemic, you know, this all happens just like you and I are sitting here. We have a conversation. I send some emails. They never have to go to a shopping mall ever again. Worth a try. Worth a try, fellas. Okay. okay. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for being here. Uh, I appreciate this. I know that when some dudes see this or some ladies see this, they'll be like, okay, got to get the guy in contact. So this is brilliant. Uh, thank we'll you. We'll chat soon. I'll reach out to you after this message. You look for the message. And thanks for being in Empower Network TV. 
My pleasure. Nice meeting you, Amos. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful Bye -bye. and stylish day, everybody. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye-bye.